It's now in an age where we sometimes wonder about uh, uh, the, how far AI can go. Well, in the field of cancer research, it seems as though it can help tailor make vaccines. Uh, vaccines for cancer are still uh, uh, in their very early stages, yet uh, researchers have uh, found ways of combining RNA and artificial intelligence to pinpoint what's needed in each different patient. Well, one of those working on this is Dr. Moez Ben Ali, Franco-Tunisian. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. Thank you for your invitation. You, you split your time between the lab and patients. Yes, I'm a specialized, I'm a medical director and uh, researcher in the field of anti-cancer drug development. My first task is to develop protocols and anti-cancer drug to manage patients with cancer. Because vaccines for cancer, it's still the dawn right now of the age, isn't it? To be honest, it's not a hot topic. It's not a new thing for us because we spend a lot of time now for more than one decade working on the subject. We should differentiate between two kinds of vaccine. The therapeutic vaccine, and this is the vaccine that you are mentioning as tailored for or personalized or precision treatment for patients with cancer and the conventional vaccine. And we have already approved a conventional vaccine uh, against uh, cervical cancer, for example. Today, it's about another thing. Uh, 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 the, th the therapeutic vaccine is a vaccine that we can uh, classify as a precision medicines, precision drugs, and as you are mentioning, we are using technology like uh, NGS, Next Generation Sequencing for Transcriptome, the RNA. And we are using artificial intelligence to uh, prepare a vaccine tailored to the patient's... Uh, what, what do you tumor. do? You, you take uh, their, a sample from the patient and you're able to pinpoint exactly yeah. what they have, yes. how does it work? Because I know certain types of cancer, like for instance, breast cancer, there's so many different types. You can't have a one size fits all vaccine for breast cancer. Uh, yes, we can differentiate between the solid and hematomaglin C tumor. And here for this vaccine is in development in several indication and several cancers. And the idea is first of all to, uh, to sequence the uh, genome, but also the transcriptome, as you are mentioning the RNA uh, of the tumor, but also to take, uh, to get an idea, to take a biopsy and to extract the T cell of the patients and to, to try to boost them and to drive them against the kind of RNA of the tumor. And this is a tailored vaccine. The idea is to boost the immunity of the person against the cancer. And that, that's why I was differentiating between therapeutic vaccine, so vaccine in the idea to beat a kind of tumor cells and the conventional how, vaccine. How new is this strategy? Excuse me? Can How you... new is this uh, strategy the, the, for fighting uh, cancer? We presented at ASCO uh, the, this, uh, this week uh, the result of a phase two, and uh, uh, I think that we will come uh, soon to approve this kind of approach, because this approach also is a copy of what we are doing with CAR T, the chimeric antigen receptor lymphocyte. Mm. Is this is the same idea? We are taking the T cells of the patients, we are boosting them in the lab, and we are reinjecting them to the patients. So the originator of the drug is the patient himself, and we reinject after that the boosted. T cell to the patients themselves. So five years ago, first COVID lockdown, that's when most of us, including my, myself, first heard of the concept of RNA sequencing, for, which enabled the fast tracking of these uh, COVID vaccines. At the time, as an oncologist, did you know that uh, this, yeah. was, this was your path? Yes, uh, you should understand that the uh, vaccine that we used against uh, COVID was developed first for oncology use, and it was in phase two, non-small lung cancer. And the idea of a kind of vaccine based on the mRNA is coming from the oncology field. Personally, I was expecting such development 
for, for COVID-19. And I even speak about since March 2021 that in December we can get a vaccine at that time. So the idea of mRNA vaccine is, uh, is uh, something that we developed and we speak it a lot or we are working a lot in labs and we start, start to emerge with uh, what we are publishing today as a result from our lab works. So incredible strides. Uh, Moez Ben Ali, you're in the private sector. Uh, there is a lot of the research, though, that's funded thanks to governments, and most notably the U.S. government, thanks to its National Institute of Health. Uh, Europeans saying uh, to U.S. researchers, come to this side of the Atlantic, but a lot of scientists are saying, wait, we don't have the money to right now to, to, uh, to level up when it comes to the kind of funding that's needed, public funding that's needed for some of this uh, fundamental research. Your thoughts on the fact that you're seeing these big budget cuts in the United States, do they affect you over here in Europe? Uh, at 100 percent. I can tell told you that the majority of the innovation that we are using today, private or government, the majority of the innovation is coming from U.S. And when you, we see that U.S. government is cutting budget for research, it's a mess for us. Uh, there is a, a earthquake, if I can say, with the decision of uh, Mr. Trump, the, uh, the U.S. president, to reduce also the cost of the, uh, the, the, to reduce the cost of drug by 30 to 80 percent. And this could impact also the research because biopharma will not find funds that will allow the development. I'm personally not of Africa, I'm not of Tunisia, and even if I'm working worldwide today, I'm thinking about the access to innovation. So I'm, I love that we reduce the cost of the innovation to give access to more patients. But unfortunately, with the equation that we have today is that only private and only US will fund the innovation, it will not be fair. So that's why I think that the world should think about another equation to fund the development of the innovation. And again, even working for private, I'm part from many cooperative groups and many patient advocacy today. And I think that the government also should take their responsibility in funding research, all the government. I think that worldwide, the WHO should play a role, more proactive role, not just in pandemic area. They should play another role, giving access to innovation to the whole country. And I think a decision like the decision of U.S. also to go out from the WHO should give us the possibility to think about what will be the role of this institution in the future. Should we think about another institution that could play the role to eradicate some deadly disease like cancer? And as a researcher, I can tell you that uh, we can eradicate cancer. Personally, since 2009, we were speaking about precision medicine. I have the first theory in precision medicine, and I was speaking about this kind of tailored mm -hmm. drug since 2009. And I, ha I create a, 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 an advocacy group called Cancer.0. The idea is to eradicate cancer. But the problem that I am face facing is access to innovation for country with less resources, and especially Africa, or other country in, in Asia, or even here in Europe. So, and so who drives research and development? Is it, like you say, the World Health Organization? Is it, who, who's the one who, who leads the charge? Is it, is it the European nations, the G7 countries, the G20? Who, who should be in charge of driving, uh, making sure that there is enough money for the kind of research yeah. that you do? Currently, unfortunately, the, the, the funds are coming from a private and especially from the biggest biopharma only. And that's why we can't blame them on the fact that the innovation is still costly. You were speaking about a vaccine that we can easily bring to the market, but the cost will be really very high. Today, there is another kind of treatment linked directly to the cure from cancer. This is the CAR-T, the chimeric antigen receptor lymphocyte T, and it was the, the, primary, uh, the primary drug that gave us the idea of thinking about a vaccine against cancer. The cost is really high. For one, for one treatment, one dose is 200 
around 250,000 and patients to be cured from a disease like acute lymphocytic leukemia when we have the first indication for this drug is six doses. So almost 1.2 million euro so it's really very expensive mm. so we can't blame biopharma because they are financing only the development so we can't blame them on the cost the high cost i think that worldwide we should think about a way to finance research we should think that uh, we should bring our our part and the best way to reduce the cost of innovation is to participate to create the innovation. Mm. So if we will continue to make that at, as the only responsibility of biopharma, we can't also ask biopharma to reduce a lot this cost and we can't ask them to give access to all patients or all patients on the world. It's my dream personally right. to give access to this kind of drug, to this innovative drug, to this precision medicine, to all the to, worldwide, to all patients worldwide. But unfortunately, I should, we should convince politicians today and government to participate in this effort of funding. All right. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Moaz Ben welcome. Ali, for being with us here on France 24. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation.